my dear friends and loved one, thank you for joining us this Sunday afternoon. I give our God thanks for the privilege to be coming to you. I want to say to you in my usual term, welcome to launch out for Christ Ministries, Church of God of Prophecy. I hope that this broadcast will be a blessing to each and every one of you that will join us today. Um, I am coming in a kind of mood today wherein my faith antenna is up. My trust is up. My uh, blessed assurance in our Lord Jesus Christ is up. I pray that you will tune in today and connect, believe with me in prayer, believe in me as I break this word with you that the Lord will indeed bless our heart. I also want to greet you on the behalf of my family, my wife, and my children. They want me to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And as I always say, we are in this together. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Jesus declared on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I do have a team today that I want to speak to you, Han, and, and the theme that I want to speak on today is excellent spirit, exercise an excellent spirit. And I will add to it, for God already help us. Exercise an excellent spirit. Excellent spirit is needed in this time more than ever. But there was a particular song this morning that has truly blessed my heart. And I tell myself, if I get the chance, I will not sing, but I want to quote this song to you. I hope that this song will be a blessing to you as well. For sometimes we, are become, we have become discouraged. Sometimes we have forget where the Lord has brought us from. Sometimes we forget who we really are in Christ Jesus. But I will quote the song as it was penned. There is a lighthouse on the hillside that overlook life sea. When I'm tossed about, it send the light that I may clearly see. He has shined his light upon me so that I may clearly see. If it was not for this lighthouse, my ship will sail no more. A lot of people look up on me as I travel along life sea. They told me to take the lighthouse down for there is no need having it standing around. But my mind reflects on one of those stormy nights when just in time I have seen the light. It was the light from that old lighthouse that leads me safely home. I thank God for the lighthouse. I hold my life to him. King Jesus is the lighthouse. He shined in a light and a world of sin. He has shined his light upon me so that I may clearly see. If it was not for the lighthouse, my ship will sail no more. They told us sometime to take the lighthouse down. 
For the big ships, they don't sail this way anymore. But you that are out there, you have your own experience. You can now reflect in your mind one of those stormy nights when just in time you have seen the light. It is the light that comes from the lighthouse that lead us safely home. King Jesus is that lighthouse. I am feeling so blessed by this song. Because of the lighthouse, I can also declare, no matter what storm clouds may rock the ship of mine, the light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Though my ship may be rocking and my sail may be tore, I shall find rest in the highs of the storm. If you are there, give God a praise with me. Give him a praise with me. He is able. He is able. Just in time. Never before. Never too late. Just in time. I have seen. I have saw the light. Just in time. That same lighthouse. That is on the hillside. That people tell you to take down. Because it have no significance. Just in time. In that stormy night, I saw the light. My brothers and sisters, right now in this time of storm, I am seeing the light. The light from that lighthouse is leading us. Jesus, who is that lighthouse, he is leading us. I am here to encourage you not to lose heart. I'm here to encourage you not to lose faith. I am here to encourage you not to give up. Don't take the lighthouse down. Don't take it down. It might not be big, but it will be enough when you are in need. Keep that light burning. Keep that sound going forth. Keep that gospel song going Hallelujah, because someone is in need of it. Hallelujah. I hope that song is a blessing to you that I have just caught because it blessed me so richly this morning. I felt this morning in my room uh, it, that it was God over me and he is really keeping me alive. And I hope that he will come right down in this basement as well. And that he will send an anointing that you too will feel that connection to know that you are not alone. This time I want to do a little reading here from the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. Uh, the reading from verse 1 to verses 11, to 11 verse. And it reads thus. It pleased Dairos to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three president, of whom Daniel was first that the prince might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the president and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the old realm. Then the Presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find 
known accusation or fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these president and princes assembled together to the king and, and uh, said thus unto him, King Dairos live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselor and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days save of thee O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O Lord, now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persian, which alter it not. Wherefore, King Dairus signed the writing on the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and give thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and find Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. I repeat the team at this time. Exercise an excellent spirit for God already help us. I am not going to say today that our help is on the way. I'm going to go a step further and assure you that God already help us. All we need to do as his people is to exercise an excellent spirit. An excellent spirit is a powerful weapon. When all hell is breaking loose around us, when we can stand in our authority, stand in the assurance of God. Stand and see the salvation of God. Stand allowing God to fight the battle for us. That is powerful. The enemy are confused when the righteous man exercise an excellent spirit. The enemy is wondering all that I am doing. The man is so excellent in his spirit. But my brothers and sisters who are listening to me, this kind of spirit is not an ordinary spirit. An excellent spirit is from the Lord. So the Bible declares that an excellent spirit was found in Daniel. All that is happening, he was 
possessed in an excellent spirit. The reading tell us that these men try all that they could to find some accusation against this man Daniel. But they could not found none. I want to say that sometimes we are too full of guilt. Sometimes we are too full of wrongdoing. We allow the enemy to find accusation against us too easily. Sometimes we give the enemy too much to say about us. Sometimes we blame the enemy, but we are guilty. Because sometimes what has been said about us is the true. We are guilty as charged. But for this man, Daniel, nothing they could have found against him. Except they found something concerning the law of his God. When they try everything and couldn't find anything, they come up with a strategy. They came up with a plan against his meditation, against his quiet time, against the time that he spent with his God. Hallelujah. Daniel knows the thought of those ancient songs. There are days I love to pray with the sanctified and blessed. But there are times when I go to God all alone. If you could steal away in a portion of your day, you will find it better to be just all alone. Aha, there are days I love to be all alone with Christ my Lord. But they set the decree that no man should make any petition to any God save the king for 30 days. Oh my God, I know that some believers are reflecting on this text and said one day is too long. And they want us to stay away from God. They want Daniel to stay away from his God for 30 days rather just to please man. But for Daniel, that wasn't even a thought. That wasn't even an option. There's something that the enemies are asking us for. These things are not even a option. We are not even thinking about them. Because we must go before our God in reverence. For he deserves our praise. Daniel, as we know, was a Hebrew boy that was taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel was in captivity with his friend Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah because so were they named. This was their given name. The Babylonian king seek to change their identity by changing their name and try to change 
their diet, the type of food that they eat. So they give unto Daniel the name Belshazzar. And the name Belshazzar means may Baal protect his life. The name Belshazzar is a Babylonian name. They seek to change Daniel's identity. They seek to separate him from his God. Hallelujah. Sometimes they might change our physical appearance. But in the realm of the spirit, we know who we are. In God, we know whom we believe. In God, we know whom we serve. No wonder Paul declared, I know him whom I believe. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him against that day. They might try to change your identity in the physical realm. But they cannot change our identity in the realm of the spirit. We are washed in the blood of the lamb. We are the blood washer. We are the call of God. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are peculiar people to show forth the praises of Yahweh. That's who we are. We are royalty. Hallelujah. So, Daniel name, which is means that God is my judge. Daniel means God is my judge. Is there anyone out there that is accusing you? Is there anyone out there that is judging you? Hallelujah. Let them know. Tell them that God is my judge. We are not afraid of the judgment of man. We are not afraid of the accusation of men. For God is my judge. Hey, hey, he leadeth me by his own hand. He leadeth me. Then I shall hear a call from thee. His Christ through Jordan that leadeth me. We are not afraid of the accusation of man. For God is our judge. We will not worship Baal. We are not seeking the help of Baal. We trust in one God. He is the true and living God. His name is Yahweh. He is our God. Now my brothers and sisters. I want to tell you. That Daniel, the, 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 the decree that was signed by Daniel, by the king against Daniel, was not for him to go in the den and take care of the lions. But they put him in the den of lions that they might devour him. But Daniel exercised an excellent spirit because he knows that God was with him. I will come back to Daniel. But the next 
person I want to make mention of is Azariah. They call him Meshach. But Meshach is a Babylonian name. His right name is Azariah. Azariah means the Lord is gracious. And he is a descendant of Benjamin. Shedrach means I am very fearful. So they change his name from the gracious God to a man that is exercising fear. But I think this man know the song that declares I must have the Savior with me for I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me and his arms around me thrown. Then my soul shall fear no hill. Let him lead me where he will. He's not a fearful man because he trusts in the God who is gracious. The third man that I want to make mention is Meshach. Meshach is also a Babylonian name and the name is unknown. But Mishael, which is his Hebrew name, means who is what God is. God is who he says he is. These men's names speak volume of the God whom they serve. And the fourth man is Abednego, servant of Nigo. Right Hebrew word name Azariah. And Azariah means the Lord has helped us. And this is not in the future tense. But it is in the past tense. It means that it already happened. So no matter what you go through. It is not that God will help you. But it is that he already helped us. So in all circumstances. I call upon you to exercise an excellent spirit. For God will see us true. Now my brothers and sisters. Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. The lions were ready for a feast. For they were hungry. These man, men believe that they have now captured Daniel. And they have got, gotten rid of him. But I want to tell you my brothers and sisters. God might not deliver you from your situation. But I can assure you. That he will deliver you through your situation. He will deliver you in the midst of the situation. In the midst of your trial. When it seemed like all his loss. He reached down his hand. The book of Daniel is a testimony. That God indeed will deliver his people. Now we don't need to worry ourselves. All we need to do as believer. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptian that we.
we see today we will see them no more the God of heaven will fight your battle for you and you just need to hold your peace be still and know that God is fighting your buckle for you. I hear the writer declares, though the buckle may be hot and the conflict sore, though rugged the road as the journey go on, hold on a little longer. Take Jesus at his word and he will carry you through, right through the promised land. He will fight for you. Hallelujah. It is so funny. Because the enemy don't know the God that we serve. They watch Daniel waiting for him to die. They were hoping that at the morning or the breaking of the day they would have looked in the lion's den and saw only bones hallelujah but they thought that god will not come true for his people but i am persuaded i am sure i am confident that he that keepeth zion he never slumber he will not sleep i feel it the lord is your keeper the lord is the shade upon your right hand the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night he shall preserve your soul He's coming true. We are waiting for the breaking of the day. For some, the breaking of the day will be we have get rid of the enemy, the troublemaker. Ah, he is now dead. But when the king wake up the next morning he ran to the lion's den he was a believer he called out oh daniel servant of the living god was your god able to deliver you daniel speak out of the dungeon Oh, King, live forever. The God of the Hebrews, the God of Moses, the God of, of, of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Joseph, he was able to deliver. He shut the mouths of the lions and there is no harm that is done to me he is lord the enemy is watching you hoping that you might fail they are watching they are saying when shall he die the enemy is counting your days hallelujah but go and tell them i shall not die but i will live and i will declare the work of the lord amen i shall declare his wonderful works daniel was able to speak to his adversaries that is God he's a deliverer our God he's a deliverer he will not fail you 
you will not fail. You might end the fire. The next three men was, I use their Babylonian name, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, King Nebuchadnezzar, was raised up in pride. And he built a statue. He built a image of gold. And he asked these. He declared that every man. Whoever will not bow. And worship. The statue. Will be cast. Into the lake. Or the fiery furnace. Now there was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Or may I say, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Who are servants of the living God. These men declares, O king, we never practice bowing. The only person we bow to is a sovereign God. The creator of heaven and earth. We only bow to Yahweh. Our knees. We don't learn to bow to idol. Our knees are stiff. They can't go down. So these men came. And found these Hebrew boys standing. While everyone else was bowing, I think it was easy to identify them. Because as far as it concerned, they were the troublemaker. For everyone else was bowing before the earthly king. And the image that cannot speak. But these men were standing in defiance. For they are not going to renounce the name of their God. Well, the king brought them nearer and said unto them, Is it truth, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you have not bowed or you decide in your hearts that you are not going to bow? If this is true, you will be caused into a fiery furnace. And who is this God that will deliver you out of my hand? The Hebrew boys declare, O oh King, live forever. We are not careful to answer you concerning these matters but we want you to know that we will not bow to you are your idol and even if you change your mind and said away with the fiery furnace we will still we will not bow for we don't worship Heidel. We know what happens. They were bound. Hands. And feet. They were cast. Into a fiery furnace. That was heated seven times. Hotter. It was so much. So much heat. That the men that picked them up, the fire was so hot that the fire kills them, burns them to death. But they throw these Hebrew boys into the flame of fire. But while the king was observing what was happening, what was happening, he rise 
from his seat. And he asks the question, have we not caused three men into the fiery furnace? Lo, behold, look, I have seen four men. They are loose in the flame. They are not burned. They are walking around. And the fourth man that I saw is like the Son of God. Hey, the fourth man is like the Son of God. Is it amazing to know that the fourth man is in the fire with us? Is this not amazing to know that when you're going through the fire, he will be there? When you're going through the water, he will be there? When the flood rise up, it will not overthrow you. For the fourth man is on the journey with you. That is amazing. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that the fourth man is with us. His name is Jesus. I'm closing. His name is Jesus. He might not save you from it. But he will save you through it. Oh I feel it. In shady green pastures. So rich. And so free. God lead it. His children. Along. Where the cool water flows. Beats the weary one feet. God leadeth his children along. Some through the water. Some through the flood. Some through the fire. But all through the blood. Some through great sorrow. But God give the song. In the night season. And all the day long. Exercise an excellent spirit. For God already help us. Don't bow to no idol. Stand up for your God. Stand up for what you know that is right. If God be for us. Who can be against us? Excellent spirit will take you through just about any and everything. I have so much testimony about my life. When I exercise an excellent spirit and allow the Lord of heaven to fight my battle. He have delivered me from so much. My back many times was against the wall. Mountains on either side. Enemies behind. Seas of situation before me. But I, ex I exercise an excellent spirit. And through it all. God deliver me out of many figurative lion den or lion dens, many figurative fire. He have delivered me out of them all. But the Bible tells me many are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord God will deliver them out of them all. He will keep your bone. None will be crushed. Evil shall slay the wicked. They that ate the righteous 
shall be desolate. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach us, Lord, to wait upon you, to trust in you. He will not fail you. When you're going through your storm, listen for his voice. He might not speak loud, but his voice makes the difference. Exercise an excellent spirit. Trust in God and never die. He will surely bring you out. If you are there, I don't know what you are going through. You might feel like you have gone through enough. You have, you know, keep up with too much. You have allowed too much to go unnoticed. And you believe now it's time for you to fight the battle for yourself. I encourage you. The battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. The Lord will fight for you. You shall hold your peace. And the cart, the chain that seeks to bind you, they will serve to remind you. They will drop powerless behind you. When you pray, get in your closet as Daniel did. If it's three times a day, sin shall never be busy. If it's two time a day, sin shall never be busy. If it's even one time a day, sin shall never be busy. Pray to your God. I am persuaded that he will see you too, true. Well, my brothers and sisters, thank you for listening to me again this afternoon. The Lord allow me to bring another message to you. If you are there and you are going through your situation. I want to pray with you. Because prayer makes the difference. Prayer changes things. Don't give up. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find the friends of faithful? There is none like the Lord Jesus. You might not be a Christian yet. You are tied up in so many difficult circumstances. Seas of problem. Fires of problem. You're in figurative lion's den. I call you to pray with me at this time. For I believe that God will see us through. Just as I am without one plea. But as thine blood was shed for me. And as thou bidst me to come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come. Lord, your people who have heard your words today. Your words is saying to us that we should exercise an excellent spirit. Because you have already helped us. I prayed for the listeners that are out there. That are facing their different challenges and circumstances. Their problems. Decisions to make. Pray that you will be with them. Through their times of decision. Help them to wait for your voice. Help them to listen to your voice. Help them to exercise an excellent spirit. And allow you to fight their, your, their battle for them. For you are going to deliver them.
I know that if they put their trust in you, you're going to see them true. I prayed for their deliverance. I prayed for their breakthrough. I pray that victory will come to just about everyone that trusts in you. Lord, for those who are not saved, we pray that salvation will come to their home. That they will come to know you as their personal savior. Lord, we give you thanks for this word today. In Jesus' name. My friends that are out there, if you have listened to this word, you want to say yes to Jesus, the invitation is yours. Accept him as your savior today. Tomorrow is promise to no man. It said today, if you have heard, if you have heard my voice, harden not your heart. Open your heart and let Jesus come in. Say yes to him and he will set you free. And who the Son set free is free indeed. God bless you. God keep you. I love you until another Sunday like this. My heart will go on singing. With joy I carry on. I love you. Shalom. Peace.